Alright, so this is the first video that we have done showing the actual interbellum server. I'm doing this entirely as a single cut as I go through this. There won't be any editing of this video whatsoever because I'm lazy and I'm not part of the art team. Uh, another component of that is there is literally no aspect of art team in my client whatsoever. Um, so it's going to be the base uh, Warhammer uh, graphics that you'll be seeing on this video. Um, what we're going to be going through today, just to showcase a little bit, is actually the fact that we have what we call 100% uh, client fidelity. Um, so basically on the character stat window, every single stat, whenever you get an increase to it or a decrease to it, it actually shows up on your character window. Another component of what I'm going to show is I actually have all of these abilities set up for uh, animation testing. And I've already put the animations that work for the black orc on the bar here. But these also summon buffs that I can showcase that the stats work. Um, first off, we're going to open up the character window. Uh, the black orc already has some random ass stats uh, thrown on it, just so that we can see base values. For example, they change the base values of everything that's going on here. But I will go through each one of them as we do this. So, uh, first off, I'll show you the gear that I'm going to use to um, display the stats on the screen, and then also we'll use some of these abilities that give buffs. So, for example, these are all just completely made for stat testing purposes, right? Um, and we have made every single interbellum stat show up on screen with percents, if they're percent related or not. We even have the negative percent AP cost there. There is a mass that you can, you'll never find mass on gear, but it is on this piece of gear just to show that it can be changed. And remember, on Interbellum, a lot of these things are actually ratings. For example, this is 50 block rating, not 50% block. Notice it does not have the percent there. That actually equates to, like, 0.5 block. Um, but yeah, so first off, we'll, we'll equip this here. You'll see that these change appropriately. But of course, this is normal. Everyone, normal stats, this is not anything special. But we'll go through, show you that fact that on Interbellum, we've actually added in what the stats do very specifically. So you can see all those things that were listed in the original public release on our stat system are there and being modified according to the stat. Just to prove that, for example, this is 1100, 200, and 300 for melee attack power. So it shows up under offense as 1600. If I unequip this item, it draws back to 1250 because it was being adjusted by those uh, three stats right there, right? Um, and then the other flip side of this is, of course, we've got the other stats. And then we have the brand new agility stat, right? Obviously, you see that being increased and not. Um, we'll go through this too. You see it shows your pushback. All of our lovely additional stats for our primary stats. Uh, oh, I need to fix that. That should not say dodge rating by 600%. It should say dodge rating by 600. So, that, I've got something to fix. Cool. All right, we'll take those off. Oh, as you can see, we've actually readjusted the uh, stat categories. I think they used to say stats, defense, melee, ranged, magic. And that just really wasn't a whole lot of information. So, we have completely adjusted those entirely. For example, now you can see all of your lovely resources, like how many max action points you have, AP per second, stuff like that, without needing add-ons in order to do it. Now, granted, the add-ons will still work. Um, for example, I can... Uh, I could open up, and I can... Let's see... Add-ons. Like, I've got... Action, these things will still pull that information from the window, they just now will actually work without needing some extra uh, code, which is cool. I mean, I'm all about client fidelity. Um, just to show you that these these adjust as well. Do I have the right ones? Yeah. Yeah, these stats are ridiculous. Obviously, no stat would ever have 150 AP per second. I just threw random numbers when I was making them. Um, 
But here you can see wounds increases your health. Now remember, wounds increases your health by four uh, per wounds with a base of 6,000 now. Um, yeah. And then percent stats, like outgoing damage, um, list here. If that's 10% here, shows up as 110 because obviously you have a base of 100%, right? Um, I still need to attach a clamp function to Adrenal per second. You're not supposed to get higher than 36, and that should be displaying on the client. So I do have another thing to fix here. I personally have, up until this video, have never thrown 50 adrenaline on any item or anything like that. I'll take those off. All of your offensive stats are attached accordingly. Um, accuracy also has a base of 100, so it lists 100 plus your value. That also means you could have negative values, right? Uh, critical hit rating at critical hit rating is automatically uh, dropped, like uh, on the screen, so you always see your percent chance to crit rather than your critical hit rating itself. Uh, same with potency. You always see your po your critical hit uh, damage percent here rather than your potency rating. And this also automatically includes the 125% that you get base. So, for example, when we equip this, you'll see that the values go up by 2 and 1.5 rather than one fit, uh, or 2 and 0.5 rather than, fuck, by 1 and 0.5 rather than by 50 and 100 as those stats are automatically converting those ratings to the percents on your character window. And, of course, your penetration and sagacity goes up as well. Uh, same with accuracy. 200 accuracy rating is going to convert to 2 accuracy. So, of course, that goes to 103.2. And, of course, melee attack power and all that stuff adjusts as it should. Put those. Defense. See, like I said, mass goes up. Fortitude goes up. Healing received goes up. Hardiness and fortitude work exactly like crit and potency in the fact that your rating value is automatically converted into a percent on the character window. So you always know, you know, uh, as each one of these actually says what it does, for example, fortitude says you can never go below 110. So even though you're reducing an enemy's critical damage by 29.8, if they only have 130 critical damage, you're only going to re actually reduce it by 20. And that's just math done on the server. Of course, your character stat windows are never going to be able to tell you uh, what your opponent has. So, for example, your critical hit rating here is not your actual critical hit rating. Because, for example, if this if I hit myself, this 2.4, and I hit myself, I have a 14.4% chance to not be crit. So, of course, 2.4 minus 14.4 is negative, so zero. No one, I could not crit myself. Mass shows up like this. It is the longest stat tooltip. Reason why is because CCs are going to show you their base duration. So, for example, Ensnared is going to show you a 16 second duration. And so, this tooltip is the method that we use to describe to people, especially if they have not seen documents, as to why that duration of Ensnared is not actually 16 seconds on pretty much anyone ever. Uh, you have a base of four mass, so of course you have eight second duration on, on Ensnared. Now, you can lower your mass. Uh, for example, most melee DPS lower their mass for additional movement speed. Uh, goblins can lower their mass for some of their racial tactics and stuff like that. And of course, people can lower their masses as well. Um, so it will just... You know, your mass... Your, your CCs are based off of your mass versus your target. Uh, minus certain things like silences and disarms which are always, and roots, which are always five seconds. Um, just like crit and potency and hardiness and fortitude, block and dodge are ratings which are converted. So, of course, you get 50.5% uh, block from 50 dodge block rating and 1% dodge from 100 dodge rating. Pushback community, however, is a percent, so, of course, it goes up by that value. And HP4 is a linear value, right? 
Uh, one thing to note is your HP 4 is multiplied by 5 outside of combat, and that's displayed here. This is how Interbellum will be doing their out of combat healing, rather than Mythic's original like 10% every couple seconds when you're out of combat. Ours is based off of your HP 4. You get uh, 120 HP 4 for free, if I remember correctly. Take that off. 457. Yeah. And then the rest of your base, in quotations, uh, HP 4 comes from toughness. Uh, HP 4 can be found on gear. Uh, good luck seeing 200. That is just a random ass value I threw just to showcase that it was changing. In fact, most of these are basically 50, 10, uh, 100, 150, and 200, unless the stat specifically needed to be lowered so that it would actually work on the screen. For example, 150 pushback immunity would just scale this out at 100, right? Um, last category is resistances, and a good thing to notice here on resistances is that we actually have the direct and indirect damage uh, reductions for all of these. And the reason why is because armor only works against direct damage. It also applies that value to every single resistance. So, for example, if you add armor, which I'll do right here by adding armor via this buff, you'll notice that the direct damage goes higher than the indirect damage for every single one of our stats. Also, uh, we have what we call um, diminishing returns. So, for example... Actually, we'll take that off. So, like, this is 3.84, right? So, once I add 300 armor, which would be 400, notice that it does not increase by four times. It almost does. But if you, like, for example, we add this several times, you'll see that the amount that you get every time you go up by additional more armor lowers in terms of how much you actually receive out of it. Um... So this means that once you start getting above 50% damage mitigation, it becomes very difficult to get closer to um, 75%. Um, and what this does is it allows, uh, it makes it makes block more valuable uh, when you have lower resistances, and it makes it less valuable when you have higher resistances. And it also means that, uh, for example, like if you if you block, and your enemy is penetrating you through the you know penetration and sagacity, then if you have decently high armor resistance values and you block, because you, reducing your resistance doesn't mean a whole lot when you have a fuckload of it, right? That means that you won't get penetrated as much, which means that tanks that actually have high armor slash resistances and high block won't, when they block, they're not going to be getting pen, uh, penalized too much from those those slightly higher values of sagacity and uh, penetration that you can obtain versus uh, resistances. Um, and that's just another way. Uh, your incoming damage stat is negative on gear. Reason why is because it, and of course it doesn't. I have to fix that as well. Uh, this should actually reduce and take this to 80. Um, this, we got a couple bugs related here. Just from, uh, we got a new build literally this morning and there is a handful of things that I need to readjust. But yeah, uh, this would normally turn that into 80. So you would take 80% of all incoming damage. But yeah, that is the sat windows. Uh, as I showed like for here, for example, this increases armor. And it stacks. This is part of our stat stage buff system, for example, right? And you notice that each time it increases. All of these increase something. It might take me a second to remember what they do. Let's see. 81 is hardiness. All right, no. That, that one needs to be this. That's a negative stat. Yeah, notice that hardiness increases as I use this. And then, let's see, what's this one? Range of attack power. And you get more range of attack power as you go. 
This is probably melee attack power. This is a debuff for melee attack power, so I can lower it. Right? And that is... We basically have that for every single stat stage. They're all enhanced or reduced, and they all say buff and debuff. They all show up on your fucking buff bar and your target's buff bar. Unlike uh, other projects, and also unlike Mythic. Mythic did not have this uh, in a large number of things. They hid a lot of their buffs. Uh, or they just straight up did not bother actually assigning the correct stuff in the client. Uh, now we'll go into animations. Um, these are all the animations that work for one for uh, orcs uh, with melee weapons. Uh, there's a couple in here that work for a range weapon, which is kind of why this one's separated right here. Uh, just to showcase that there are ranged animations for uh, green skin. I set this aside to show you that they can actually still fire bows. Uh, there is no projectile on this skill, uh, so it won't actually show an arrow flying out. And also, all these skills technically are targeting the orc, because obviously I'm not hitting body, anybody around here. Uh, but yeah, so there are a lot more animations that were originally used in the than what are used in most things. Uh, of course, we would never really use that one for a skill, but that is kind of funny. And you can expect to see these used. Of course, some of them are copied. They have what uh, different speeds when you use them. All of these test abilities are basically just Frankenstein from mob abilities, so it's saying uh, invalid target. And that's because most of them say target an enemy, and I made them target myself in the server. Just for a matter of letting my lore masters and art department actually be able to play with the animations without me having to go through and make them individually for every single fucking class. They just get to select those kinds of things. Animations don't change when you have a shield equipped when you're using one-handed weapons by themselves. Oh, did I break it? Okay. All of these just don't have one-handed animation. Okay. And that is what I have available for you guys today. We will be doing some more video uh, public releases as we, as I'm allowed to for certain things. And yeah, but our server actually exists. We're actually doing stuff here. Guys, don't think we're just all documents. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.